So I turned this Exoterra into this for some extremely rare geckos. Now why do I say rare geckos? Because these geckos only exist in one part of the world and that is New Zealand. So I started off with an Exoterra and it was actually pretty simple. But let's take it way back. Way back. It's getting cold here in Canterbury. And this is where it started. So it started with a block of cocoa fiber. Now I soaked that thing in water. A few minutes later it turned into my substrate layer. I needed fern moss, which I got from the backyard, free as you do it. I also needed browse, but this is just the beginning. This is me constructing the wireframe. So let's get that base layer done. So my base layer consists of organic balls, some mesh, some charcoal, and soil, and of course the cocoa fiber. I'm also going to add some dead plants, now controversial, the dead plants actually add texture and color. Now I've seen this done before and it actually looks epic, but stay tuned. Now I'm going to play around with some hardscape and this is the first look. I didn't like it, so the beauty of the hardscape and the most enjoyable part of any terrarium build is changing things, moving things around, and the decorative elements. <laughs> Now I don't know why, or maybe I do know why, but moss just makes terrariums pop. It looks super dope. Now it's used for several reasons. The main reasons I'm using is firstly, like I said, it looks super dope. Second reason, I'm trying to mimic or replicate the New Zealand native environment as much as I can, especially for the forest geckos that are gonna be in here and the northern green geckos that are gonna be in here. But don't worry, these guys are compatible, meaning that these two species can live together in the same enclosure. The forest gecko is nocturnal, the northern green gecko is diurnal, but they're both cathemeral in nature, meaning that they'll both be out during the day and at night when hunting. Now I'm building this nursery for two reasons. The first reason is, well, I've got adult lizards and they might have some fun and have babies. So this is the perfect environment to make sure that the babies are A, separated from the parents, they're eating, they're healthy, and also they'll put on some size and grow in here until they're an appropriate size to go back into their outdoor enclosures. The second reason is, well, it's a good quarantine option to keep lizards inside during our very, very cold winters and then put them back out in spring when it's much, much warmer. Alright, let's get the finishing touches done. Let's get the water in there and let's get the geckos in there. Now these are New Zealand geckos. I've got two species in here, the Northern Green Gecko and the New Zealand Forest Gecko. Now what makes our geckos special? Well firstly, look at the environment that I need to create. I haven't done this because I want to, I've done this because this is a necessity. This is the environment they need to thrive. The second special thing is you need a permit to keep these in New Zealand. They're that protected. And it's a privilege for me to be able to keep these guys in captivity. And why rare do you ask? Well because they only live in this part of the world. They're endemic to New Zealand meaning that they only exist in New Zealand. They're also very hard to find in the wild. I've never seen one in the wild in my whole life and that is not for the sake of me not looking. And we want to keep it that way. So once again I'm extremely privileged and grateful that I can keep these guys in captivity. Because I want my daughter to grow up and see these animals still existing. And that's what's important and that's why the conservation is so important. So who am I? I'm Max, and I keep some fantastic beasts. Ever since I was a kid I've been obsessed with these animals. Ectotherms, fish invertebrae, reptiles, amphibians. They're incredible animals. I live in New Zealand, and in New Zealand we have some of the most spectacular geckos on this planet, and they only thrive in this part of the world. I try to replicate their natural environments as much as I can in an enclosure or terrarium environment. Now New Zealand geckos are also very interesting in the sense that they eat honey. They eat honey, they eat fruit puree, but they're mainly insectivores, meaning that their main diet consists of insects that live in New Zealand. So if you like what I'm doing, that's dope. You might want to stick around. You just might get a closer look into my world. Stay tuned. <laughs>